Hello friends, in this one I'm going to talk to you about the natural log function when it operates in complex numbers. So, ln of z is what we are going to talk about. And z here is a complex number, so that's why it says that z belongs to c. And to make this work, you really want to see z in this more useful form. So it says z equals r times e to the i theta. Let's think about this a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace z with r times e to the i theta, and I'm going to try to apply the basic rules of logarithms that we perhaps have learned before. So I mean specifically because you see the r and the e to the i theta parts are getting multiplied. What you can do is we write this as ln of r. Now r in this context remembers really the magnitude. It's the length of the number z. Plus the ln of e to the i theta. And then of course the ln and the e functions are inverses. So what you can do with that expression is just cancel them off. And that's going to give you the next part that's going to tell you that ln of r. So the ln of the magnitude of the complex number z plus i theta is equal to ln of 0. I'm sorry, of z rather. <laughs> And if you look at the output, so the input z is a complex number, and the output on the left side here is also a complex number. ln is the real part of that number, and then i theta, that pretty much constitutes like the complex part of the number. So the point is, if z is a complex number and you stick it into the ln function, what comes out is a complex number, naturally enough. So what I'm going to do is the following. Let's review a graph here. So this is the basic kind of a graph of a complex number. So this is the angle that it makes, and then this represents the length of it. So in general, it's r times z to the i theta. So in our particular case, what I'm about to show you will involve r equals 1 only for the sake of simplicity. So what does all of this tell us? In other words, what we really want to see is, for example, what happens to a circle when it's fed through the ln function in complex numbers. That's a kind of really interesting thing that happens, actually. So here's the circle. I'm going to talk to you about the circle a little bit before we get to anything else. So in this circle, you see that, for example, I'm going to begin over here, where the length of the complex number r is 1, and then theta equals 0. Then I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to feed that into the function. So that's going to, again, be r equals 1, and then theta here will be pi over 2. Then we'll traverse it down to here with theta equals pi, and there again, the length of the complex number will be 1. It will traverse down to here, where theta equals 3 pi over 2. If you think about this, this is really the complex plane, but if you look at it, it's also pretty much the unit circle. Now here, from here straight down, is still r equals 1. And lastly, we spin all the way around, so we come back to theta equals 2 pi radians. But r still equals 1. That's the big idea here, okay? So what we're going to do is take this information and feed it through our natural log function, our ln function. Let's carry that out here. So I'm going to do ln of 1 times e to the i 0. So I'm replacing where r equals 1 and theta is 0 at first. So if I apply the rule that I, we just derived over here, I'm going to apply this rule. That whenever, for example, ln of z goes in, z is written as r times e to the i theta. The output will be ln of r, the magnitude, plus i theta, the angle that you see there, okay? In other words, the angle that the number here makes with respect to the horizontal axis in that position. So let's take a look at all of this. I'm going to go through this. So ln of 1 times e to the i theta will become ln of 1 plus i times 0. Well, ln of 1 is just, of course, 0. And then i times 0 is also 0. So you just end up with 0. You have to be really careful because when you say 0, you really have to imagine that 0 is a complex number. So it's 0 plus i times 0. Next part, I'm going to now feed... 1 times e to the i pi over 2 to the top of the circle I just discussed into this function. And when I do that and I apply the rule I just derived, I'm going to get that it's ln of 1 plus i times pi over 2. Again, ln of 1. That's the ln of the modulus of the number. That's just 0 because ln of 1 is 0. And you end up with pi over 2 times i. Let's continue with the next one. So now I'm going to feed 1 times e to the i theta into the ln function. That's what I'm doing right above my head. So when I do that, it's going to be ln of 1 plus i times theta. So when this pops out, it's going to be i theta in that position. That's it, because again, ln of 1 is 0. And then you just keep this. And again, notice something, that every time you feed a complex number in, what comes out is another complex number. So complex number in, complex number out. Just like the natural function for real numbers takes a real number and it produces a real number, correct? Let's look at the next part here. So I'm going to have ln of 1 times e to the 3 over 2 pi, and here I'm missing in this position, so I want to be clear that I'm missing an i in this position right here. Okay, so above my head, pretend there's an i attached to the 3 <laughs> over 2 pi. 
Anyway, so that's going to give me ln of 1, which is again the ln of the modulus plus 3 pi over 2i, but I'm not missing the i here. <laughs> and that's going to output 3 pi over 2i. So again, a complex numbers output. Let's do one last part. So it's going to look like the one below me. It's going to be ln of 1 times e to the i 2 pi. So it's going to give me the following, ln of 1, so ln of the modulus, the modulus is 1, and that's going to be plus 2 pi i, but of course, you know, so this just ends up being 2 pi i in that position, that's it. So, so now we know what the images are from all the points on the circle. The question is, when I put these images together, what will they trace in the output complex plane? That's an interesting thing, actually, so take a look over here. I'm going to put all of this together into this next picture. So notice the following, that here, above my head, that's what you get from taking 1 times e to the i 0 and feeding it into the ln function. You get 0 right here, the complex number 0. Look at it. When you feed ln, and then you have 1 times e to the i pi over 2, that's going to produce i times pi over 2. This is the output plane where we're looking at the images of the complex numbers fed through the ln function. Next one, ln of 1 times e to the i theta, that produces this image right here, which is i theta in that position. You see how nicely this is basically tracing a line. So we have taken a circle in our input complex plane, and by passing it with this ln function, we have produced basically a line. Let's take a look. So then I'm going to feed 1 times e to the i 3 pi over 2 into the ln function, and it's going to produce 3 pi over 2 i. That's it. And lastly, for the last part, I believe we had, yeah, ln of 1 times e to the i 2 theta. You feed it into the ln function, and it produces 2 pi i. In other words, we took the circle, and as you can see, if you follow my head, we transformed it pretty much into a segment. And each output is a complex number that just happens, in this particular case, to fall along the vertical axis. And this is fascinating stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out. I want to make sure that you can see all of the work from beginning to end in case you are really interested in it. Okay, so I hope you can see all of it. There we are. I believe all of it is visible, even the parts on the bottom. Thank you. Please leave a like and subscribe. I hope this has been insightful. I'll see you in another video.